become a patron at www.patreon.com forward slash golden era bookworm for hard to find books, scans of rare photos and articles on the golden era of bodybuilding. Hi everybody, Golden Era Bookworm here. Today I'd like to present a research article proving that an increase in myonuclei, that is the nucleus of the muscle cell, is a major cause of muscle hypertrophy. And it therefore proves that overloading myonuclei with stress leads to an increase in muscle size. As many of you know, I've been recently researching the Bronze Era methods, in particular the light dumbbell system, and demonstrated it to be similar to the theory of nucleus overload. And this has led me to investigate the possible mechanisms of hypertrophy behind this Bronze Era method. As well as presenting the research article, I'd like to further present some hypotheses and delve into a deeper discussion into the many methods of muscle building. Enjoy. Now the research article I'd like to talk about today is titled Myonuclei Acquired by Overload Exercise Proceed Hypertrophy and Are Not Lost on the Training published in PNAS Journal in 2010 by J.C. Brusgaard and colleagues. And this actually led to a new line of research uh, looking further at this particular topic. The major finding is shown here in the abstract, and it shows this, this particular study shows that new myonuclei are added before any major increase in muscle size during overload. As you can see in the results, it is titled newly acquired myonuclei precede hypertrophy and the results are clearly explained where we find that the number of myonuclei increased 54 percent that's a very big number uh, and it actually started to rise that is the number of, of nuclei started to rise in the muscle after six days and seemed to then stabilize after 11 days and what we also see is that we have a, a rise in the cross-sectional area of the muscle increasing only after nine days and sta stabilizing after 14 days. So these are some pretty significant findings in the scientific community in regards to muscle hypertrophy with the uh, study and the results indicating that newly acquired myonuclei precede muscle growth or hypertrophy. Now here are some of the figures shown from this particular study and you can see that in figure A on the top right we have the myonuclei stained and are shown in white and they increase initially after the first eight days when you compare the amount of nuclei from day one to day eight there is a, a very large increase but it then stabilizes uh, the, the next two weeks um, at 21 days and you can clearly see this in the uh, graph in figure B where you have the dotted line representing the myonuclei again increasing prior to the cross-sectional area of the muscle which also increases but this occurs after the increase in myonuclei and that's shown in the uh, black line so the study clearly demonstrated that the myonuclei uh, increase precedes muscle hypertrophy now in this figure from the particular study that I've been talking about, it describes a model as, as to how the increased myonuclei can, in, can lead to an increase in hypertrophy. It's very important to firstly understand that in an untrained individual, you're going to have a certain amount of myonuclei in the muscle. And upon first training, you will have some hypertrophy due to the training stimuli leading to an increased uh, protein synthesis. And you're going to have as I said, some muscle hypertrophy just on protein synthesis alone. However, once you reach this threshold, you have a further uh, training stimuli. And it's very important to understand that the myonuclei within the muscle can only support a certain amount of muscle tissue. They can only uh, keep up a certain amount of protein synthesis is what I'm trying to say. And therefore, if you're going to continually overload the muscle, there needs to be more myonuclei in that muscle to allow the muscle to grow to be able to cope with this stress with this demand and therefore satellite cells are going to fuse to that muscle and donate their nuclei by cell fusion which is going to increase the myonuclei amount in the muscle and therefore allow for a greater protein synthesis capacity and therefore allow for a larger muscle to cope with this stress to cope with this load and therefore lead to hypertrophy.
it's a very very interesting model and it makes a lot of sense and I tell you why it makes a lot of sense because many of us know have, or know about uh, the training and and the subsequent muscle memory that can occur when you actually re begin to start training again many people report of losing a lot of size but upon training again um, they quickly gain that size back and that strength and that's mainly because um, what happens is after you stop training you may lose uh, the protein that was synthesized due to the increase in myonuclei but you don't lose the myonuclei and this is the reason why when you begin training again you quickly uh, get uh, hypertrophy occurring in your muscles because the myonuclei are there and they can support very quickly the amount of protein uh, that needs to be synthesized to cope with the stress and the load. It's a great model and it makes a lot of sense. Now after reading this particular study it really did lead me to, to ask many questions about the bronze era method and I again re uh, refer to Henry Higgins's strength and muscle course which describes really the secret of the bronze era strongman strength and massive physique. The, the, the booklet describes how there's basically a two-step process to how they got so strong and massive and basically they used the light dumbbell system for three to six months and followed this with progressive resistance training using bodybuilding and weightlifting. And um, it led me to really ask, does a light dumbbell system s similar to the nuclear uh, overload um, theory that is currently around nowadays, thanks to Team 3D Alpha, the question is, does the light dumbbell system truly increase myonuclei in the muscle? Is that what actually occurs when you're doing the light dumbbell system, when you're training for high reps using light weights every single day? And then the subsequent step of then switching to a progressive resistance training uh, method, does this actually stimulate protein synthesis and leading then to muscle growth? Is this the actual uh, two-step process that is actually occurring? And this also leads to a further question. Can one repeat this cycle over and over to get more gains? Is this, is this a possibility? Or is, is this just you know, a plain hypothesis that doesn't make sense? And do both systems have an equal or similar effect on both the increase in myonuclei and protein synthesis? It's, it's a question, it's a theory, I don't know. And, uh, and it's out there for the scientific community to really ask the question and, and actually answer it. Now just to further elaborate on what I said in the previous slide, um, it, it, it may be possible to optimize one's training. If the theory is sound that the light dumbbell system actually leads to an increase in myonuclear and then progressive resistance training may actually allow one to increase protein synthesis in our muscles and therefore get large muscles uh, more, effect more effectively, more efficiently, then it may be possible to have optimized training cycles where you firstly focus on increasing the myonuclei using the light dumbbell system and follow this cycle of training using progressive resistance uh, to increase in muscle size and therefore repeat the cycle to eventually lead to cycles of glorious growth so to speak can one possibly optimize the training and is it just using the light dumbbell system or progressive resistance training can other methods be used what are the limitations to, to muscle growth then? I mean, this really does lead to a lot of questions. As I said, this, this study really has opened a whole series of questions. Does it explain the light dumbbell system? Is, is this the way that the light dumbbell system works? Do we have an increase in myonuclear prior to um, an increase in muscle size? And is it because of progressive resistance that you have uh, an increase in protein synthesis and, 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 and muscle size? What about high intensity training from Mike Mensa? What about the PHA system from Bob Guider? Or the Matrix system which was popular in the 80s and 90s? There are so many methods out there of muscle building. How do these methods affect the myonuclei number in muscle cells? And how do they affect um, the, overall growth, the overall growth of, of the muscle? It, it's just a really interesting topic now to really investigate. How can one maximize uh, the increase in myonuclei in your weightlifting program to, to, to get maximum muscle growth. Um, what are the progressive methods of increasing myonuclei, as I mentioned earlier, in cycles to, to have periods of, of increased myonuclei with followed 
uh, muscle growth and continuing this cycle? Are there other factors that increase the myonuclear, such as your age? And the, and the paper does discuss, this study actually discusses age, because age, um, as many people know, uh, with with aging, the elderly have a much decreased muscular size, and, and the question is, with age, do do we have a decrease in myonuclei? Does this actually occur, or is it just the efficiency of the nuclei to produce protein, and that leads to a decrease in 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 muscle size? Uh, at what age may myonuclei fall? Uh, because it, it does talk about the study talks about maximizing your myonuclei while you are young. And it is very important um, to, to emphasize this because when you see many of the golden era champs, a lot of these guys started training very, very early on. And it's just the reason why they got so huge. I mean, when you look at Arnold and many other guys, Danny Padilla, for example, these guys all started as teenagers or even earlier. Boy Akoa, remember, started training uh, even be before he was 10 from memory. And a lot of these guys started training very, very early on. So did they maximize their myonuclei in their muscles while they were young? And is this a very important strategy for a bodybuilder? Should they maximize their myonuclei uh, while they are young and then focus on, pro on, on progressively increasing their muscular size? Uh, these are questions, of course. These are all questions. Um, and um, what about diets? What about diets? I mean, this is another very important question. Do diets affect the amount of myonuclei in our muscles um, or, or the or can they increase the amount of myonuclei in our muscles this is a very important question too because it is well known for example that steroids increase the amount of myonuclei in the muscles and therefore support greater muscle size this is very well known um, what about supplements can any supplements naturally increase myonuclei in the muscles um, what about other uh, methods uh, that are that are used by body builders, bodybuilders such as fasting and, and God knows what. What do all these factors affect? How do they affect uh, myonuclear and do they increase myonuclear in muscles? These are many, many questions that could be answered by the scientific community. And what about once you find out all these individual factors and their effect on myonuclear, can we find the optimal combination to increase our maximum genetic potential? These are all questions that I that I put forth to the scientific community. Now, if you are interested in learning more about the Bronze Era methods, in particular the light dumbbell system, as taught by Professor Attila to his students, Lionel Strongford, Eugene Sandow, and Al Trello, uh, you can visit my website, www.goldenerabookworm, where you'll find many, many titles uh, from these Bronze Era strongmen and um, weightlifters. Dost thou even hoist? Exactly. I mean, when I look at these Bronze Era physiques, it really does make me ask all these questions. I mean, how is it that these guys develop these muscular ripped physiques? Has it to do with uh, the light dumbbell system and progressive resistance training? I mean, is, was this the, the method that they used? And is this the magic combination that leads to an increase in myonuclei and therefore a greater capacity for muscle growth. Um, these are all questions. These are all theories, of course. And um, I leave it up to the scientific community to ask and for you guys to discuss. Did you like this video? Uh, are you enjoying my research on Bronze Era Methods? I hope you truly are and I do hope you've enjoyed watching this video. If you have, please give the video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't to the Golden Era Bookworm. Leave me your comments and thank you for watching. If you'd like to support my research, please donate via PayPal. You can become a patron. You can visit my website, www.goldenerabookroom.com to find many titles on the light dumbbell system, on bronze era methods, silver era methods, and golden era methods, and books, courses, etc. You'll find it all at www.goldenerabookroom.com. You can also get in touch with me if you wish to pass on your mags and your books, which I'm always adding to my collection. Or if you wish to collaborate, you can also email me. Um, and yeah, to take again full advantage, of course, of my affiliation with NSP Nutrition, which was Vince Geronda's original supplement company. You can use the code GEB20 to get 20% off all their products. And uh, you can also visit Old School Labs if you wish to get a discount there. Use 
my code bookworm12 for a 12% discount off their supplements. Anyway, that's it for me. This is the Golden Era Bookworm. Hope you've enjoyed watching this video. Bye for now. To take full advantage of my collaboration with NSP Nutrition and Old School Labs, please visit their websites. For NSP Nutrition, use the code GB20 for a 20% discount. And for Old School Labs, use the code BOOKWORM12 for a 12% discount of all their products. And for an entertaining look at the history of bodybuilding's supplement industry, I would highly recommend watching Subs the Movie, which I have collaborated in, available at Amazon Prime and Vimeo. Hi everybody, I just want to recommend this phenomenal book, Vince's Secret Locker, volume number two by Carl Coyne. I've been looking at this for about four weeks and I can't put it down. If you get a chance, check it out. He also has a part one that I, I highly recommend also. Uh, Vince was the trainer of the stars and had an amazing, interesting gym that today there's still not equipment like, uh, like it around. It was all made out of wood. Uh, he'll be on our radio show coming up probably in the next couple weeks or so. Have a great day and again, highly recommend this book.